Hi, Al Lewis here again. Today I want to talk about scanning a play field uh, at home. If it's something that you do just on an occasional basis, can you do it at home with a uh, home style scanner? And I had never done something as large as a play field. I have done back glasses. That's part of my uh, water slide decal back glass repair technique that I uh, developed. And I have videos out there on that. And I use a home scanner to scan a back glass. And then I use a Photoshop type program to stitch the individual scans together into one image. And I've had great success with that. And I've had great success with using photo editing programs in order to edit uh, those scans. And I've done schematics. So if you get very, very large schematics, I scan them at home using uh, you know the panel segment type of scanning where you scan all your segments together with some overlap. And then you stitch them together in a photo editing program and that works extremely well too. I get very, very good matching even on a line drawing like a schematic. But I never tried it on a full play field. And whenever that topic comes up, uh, a lot of people recommend, oh, just the only way to do it is to take it to a professional uh, scanner who can scan the entire play field at one time. And I didn't really necessarily agree with that because I've been doing back glasses for many years uh, in the um, using a home scanner and then stitching things together and everything's fine. So I said, well, let's try a play field. So I chose this rainbow play field since it was kind of blown out, uh, had been abused over the years, and it seriously needed a tremendous amount of uh, restoration on it. And I just don't have the artistic techniques that uh, some people have for painting it or anything like that. So I said, well, I'm going to make an overlay for this play field. And to do that, you have to scan the play field. So I stripped the play field down completely. And then I use a flatbed scanner. And to do this, you really should be using an obsolete scanner. Uh, you can still find them out there. It's a HP 4600 see-through scanner. It's a picture frame scanner. And you can just carry it around and lay it down on any flat surface. You can even scan your cabinet. If you need to scan your cabinet designs and stitch those together to make a, a stencil, perhaps. Um, these are extremely useful uh, scanners. Uh, they made two models, I think the 4600 and then the, I think it's the 4670. But it's going to be a lot easier if you use this type of scanner to do it. And I use the photo editing type of technique for manipulating the image, for repairing the image. Uh, just like there's two camps on how you scan, you take it to a professional for a full flatbed scan or you do it yourself, there's two camps on what kind of image that you work with. Uh, some people say that the vector image is, or the vector editing is the only way to do it because it has many, many benefits, gives you the best result. But I've never used that for any of my pinball work. I've used it in engineering work for, you know, for instance, AutoCAD programs. Those are vector type of drawing programs. But I've never done artwork in that. And I just I'm not comfortable with in doing it that way. I'm comfortable with photo editing. So part of this experiment was, well, can you scan at home? And then what happens with how accurate that scan is after you stitch it together? And then how accurate is it when you lay it on the play field? How does everything line up from the very bottom to the very top? I did not know that uh, before I did this project. So I scanned the entire play field in segments. And I'll show you in a, 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 what these segments look like individually. And when you scan anything that you need to stitch together, you need to make sure that you pr uh, use a lot of overlap in your scanned images. Meaning, when you scan a panel and you move the scanner to the next panel, only move it about two-thirds of the way and leave about a third overlap or sometimes even a half overlap of the image. And that is what produces a good stitched image. The more overlap you have in your scans, the better the stitching program can put everything together accurately. So I used about a third, eh, maybe sometimes a half overlap in the images for this kind of scan. I scanned them up. I went into a Photoshop type program, I stitched them together.
and then I had it printed. Uh, I cannot do large format printing, so I did send that out, and in this particular example, I'm making my overlay out of a Translite or a Duratrans uh, backlit transparency print. And I, and I have a one millimeter PETG clear protector over this Translite. So what I found was that after I had my Translite printed, I could pick up all of the screw uh, holes that it originally scanned because I put little black dots where every screw hole was on the photographic scan all the way from the top to the bottom. All these screw holes and then of course you have all your inserts and all this has to register perfectly together. When I put this translate initially over the play field and I backlit it, I found that not only did all the inserts line up perfectly, I mean, there's no shadows, there's no anything, they look like real inserts, but all the screw holes from top to bottom, over 43 inches, I had no errors in the stitching of the scan. It went, it was dead nuts. Every screw hole lined up exactly with a hole that was in the, ply, the original hole in the plywood. So my stitching technique and my scanning technique produced a perfect, well, perfect enough uh, print in order for me just to put it over there. So my concern was that I would have some mismatch on the inserts and they would just look kind of weird. You would have like a, like a crescent moon type of offset. But I don't have it anywhere from the very top to the very bottom. And also the screw holes all line up and even the little nail holes that you put in, all the bulb holes uh, were you know marked on the print as black circles and when I cut them out everything correct was underneath them. So the general lesson is is that yes you can do in-home scanning in smaller panels using a, a home type of scanner. You can stitch them together in a quality photo editing program and you can edit them in a photo editing program rather than a vector program if you choose. If you're good at vector uh, editing, that is the way to go. But if you're not, and you, you're more proficient in photo editing, it works perfectly fine. But I felt that the print was excellent that I uh, received. It, all the key lines are perfectly sharp. All the insert uh, lines are perfectly sharp. Everything. I'm very pleased with everything that uh, came out with this.